Last week, we talked about how you can use array.includes to determine if an array includes simple values such as strings and numbers. We ran into an issue, though, when we tried this code. As you can see, it gives us false. This happens because of how JavaScript handles object instantiation. Basically, you're creating a new object on the second line, not referencing the first one, even though they look identical. You can fix this by having a reference to the object, like this. If we save that and take a look at it, now we get true. My equals are so long they're wrapping. Let's fix that. There we go. So that's great, but you're not always going to be able to have defined references for your objects. For example, if they're coming in from a database. So array.includes isn't always going to work for us. What's the alternative? Well, we can use array.sum. Why? Because it takes a function as a parameter, which allows us a lot more flexibility. Check it out. First, we need some data. By the way, if magical sword-wielding space necromancers exploring a haunted castle on a ruined planet sounds like your jam, you should check out Tamsin Muir's Gideon the Ninth. It's a really fun book. Anyway, here's a quick and dirty object check. We're hard coding values here, but we'll fix that in a second. Save that. Refresh. And you can see that's returning true. We do have Harrowhark. Array.sum iterates over every item in the array and passes it to a function of our choice. If any execution of that interior function returns true at any point while Array.sum is iterating over the array, then Array.sum will return true. It might be 1 in 1,000 or 999 in 1,000 that return true. Doesn't matter. As long as it's at least one positive, the method will return true. Hard coding is gross, though, so let's massage that code a bit so that we can pass the string we're looking for instead. We'll do this by using array.sum inside a container function, like this. So we should expect this to return true and then false. And it does. Now what we're doing is passing the container function both the array and the character name we want to check for, and presto, we've got a functioning check that doesn't require hard-coded values inside the function. Now, I'm hoping you see the obvious flaw with all of this. We're just checking a single property of the objects in the array. This isn't a bulletproof strategy at all, as you could easily have an object that has the correct name property but doesn't have the same values in other properties, leading to false positives. In next week's tutorial, we're going to improve this code significantly in order to evaluate more complex objects and make sure we've got a match. See you then.